This video is going to be about my latest windmill creation, but before we get into that, let's do a quick review about my last try at a windmill. This was my previous windmill. Uh, I threw it together in only a few hours and it looked like it. It was basically the Frankenstein of windmills. It was my first try at PVC blades and it actually spun very well. In fact, it spun so well, it spun itself to death in about 10 minutes in a 20 mile per hour wind. Okay, this is my latest windmill. It was designed with primarily two experiments in mind. The first was, could I make a windmill that was neighborhood friendly? And the second was, could I make a windmill that would survive the winds around here? Uh, maximum power output wasn't necessarily one of the goals. Let me get into the neighborhood friendly aspect first. I live in a covenant controlled neighborhood in Colorado where wind turbines are expressly forbidden. Now Colorado has a new law that says that neighborhoods can't forbid wind turbines. So I'm kind of in some new area here. But in any case, uh, if a wind turbine is going to be in my neighborhood, it's got to be quiet, unobtrusive, and if I could make it invisible, it would be all the better. My new turbine has a diameter of 7 feet, or a little over 2 meters, which isn't exactly small. Uh, yet, because the blades are so thin, it's really hard to see. In fact, when I was filming this, I had trouble finding it in the, the view of the camera. I painted it green and brown so that it would blend in with the surrounding colors. It's mounted on a 10-foot pole. I realized that if I could put that thing up at about 60 feet, it would work a lot better and generate a lot more power. But a uh, tower in my neighborhood is pretty much out of the question, so I do what I can with what I'm allowed. I made a spreadsheet that helped me calculate uh, how I should cut the blades. And the blades were designed to spin one revolution per second per five mile an hour of wind. And it pretty much turns out that's exactly what it does. Because there's no cogging in the alternator, uh, the turbine will actually start to spin in less than a half a mile an hour of wind. And by five miles an hour, actually less than five miles an hour, it's already generating 12 volts and trickle charging a battery. Now there isn't a whole lot of power in that wind, but it is trickle charging. My pole is made out of two sections of one inch galvanized steel pipe. The, the first section is a four foot section that I drove into the ground and the second section is a 10-foot section that I have the windmill mounted on and I have the two bolted together. This works out very well because uh, what I can do is loosen the top bolt, take out the bottom bolt, and just tilt the pole right over and then work on my windmill and then tilt it right back up. Okay, let's get into the survivability aspect of this thing. Uh, my last windmill self-destructed basically because it spun too fast. Uh, these blades have been cut to be much slower. Um, the previous blades had a thin spot right at the edge of the hub, which is where uh, the blades broke. This one has been cut so that they're very thick at that point. The biggest mistake I made on the last windmill was I let it run unloaded. I don't do that with this one. It's basically hooked up to these batteries and is charging them full time or I have it shorted full time. Uh, that keeps a uh, load on the windmill and controls its speed. I'm in the process of designing a microprocessor controlled charge controller that will uh, be kind of like a windmill watchdog and make sure it never overspins itself. This is what the three phases off my windmill look like. Now, these would normally be sine waves, but this is charging the battery also. So what happens is the sine wave gets up to about 14 volts and then all the current goes into the battery and the voltage doesn't go any higher. That's why they has a level top and a level bottom. Now if I slide these on top of each other, you can see that with three phase power, there's always one or two phases charging the battery at a time. Uh, this means that the load on the windmill is very even and there's no vibration caused on the windmill by the generator or alternator. Power wise, this thing's only a moderate success. In a 12 mile an hour wind, it makes 40 or 50 watts. And because of an alternator battery mismatch, 90% of that is wasted in the alternator. Uh, the electronics that I'm in the process of designing should help that quite a bit. Um, the other aspects, the survivability, we'll find out how good that works, but the um, neighborhood friendliness, uh, most of my neighbors never even noticed this thing was up until I asked them about it, so that was a great success. Mm -hmm.